Hello everyone. Welcome to the Natural Spinner. I'm working on Bates's fleece to get it ready for washing. So this is the third installment in the series about his fleece. And you'll see me follow this through all the way to the end product, which probably will be something knitted. So if you're just seeing this for the first time and you don't know what I'm talking about, I visited the farm where the sheep lives. He's a Romney. And then I went back and was there for the shearing and got his fleece and did some skirting there at the farm. So there are two videos before this one that lead up to this. So if you want to check them out, have a look. So I'm finally to the washing stage on Bates's fleece. And I'm just sitting here picking locks out while I'm thinking about a couple things to tell you before I get started. I've been washing fleece since about 2010. I sort of am a purist at heart and I wanted to learn how to make my own fiber for spinning, not just buy it at the store. So that's what got me going and, and I looked on Craigslist, found a free fleece and the rest is sort of history as they say. Um, I absolutely love raw fleece. I love the feel of it. I love the smell of it. I love the look of a raw fleece. I just love everything about raw fleece. I can sit for hours and hours very happily just pulling out locks and sorting it into uh, the baskets here to get ready for washing. I'm going to be washing it in two ways. First to keep the lock integrity, which is what I'm doing now. I'm pulling out the locks to keep them in their lock form so they're not tangled. And the other way is just to be grabbing handfuls like this and put it in a basket. I use a plastic basket. And what I use to wash in those two forms, I use a basket. A plastic basket in a bucket. That's The bucket's downstairs in my, in my wash sink. Just a simple mesh plastic basket. These I found at the Dollar Tree. And I also found these at the Dollar Tree. It's the same material, different shape. But this makes lock washing really easy. So after the locks are all picked out, then they're lined up in the trays, in the little baskets. And all I do is layer them. I layer them. And then the final one is always an empty one because then it sandwiches all the fibers in there and they don't move when you wash them. It works fantastic. I love this way. No more little sausage tool bags. Those days are over. I did that for a while and didn't do it very much because it took so much time to do it. Sandwiching, sandwiching the fibers in the basket works absolutely great. I love it. Uh... I also keep a record. I have an index card that has all the weights. Each batch is weighed and for his fleece I am washing about eight ounces in this basket and you see it looks like it takes up the whole basket and there wouldn't be a lot of room for water to get around in it once it's submerged in the bucket but there will be. This will mush way down. Once the water gets in it, it will compact it way down. But there'll still be plenty of water, uh, room for the water and the cleaning agent to get around. So yes, I keep a track. I keep track on my little index card, which is great. It helps me to figure out my clean yield too. I've got not only the name, the year, and what farm it's from, but I've also got the grams in raw and washed so that I know what I start out with, I know what I finish with after it's dry, and I can do the math and figure out the yield. I do have a small scale over here that I use. It's just a kitchen scale, and I use that for all my weighing, so it's, it's always consistent. In case one scales off a little bit, I always use the same one. Uh, 
I do wash anywhere from four to eight ounces of fleece at a time, depending on the type of fleece I'm washing. Some fleeces are poofier, they're more spongy in nature. Long wools, which is Romney, is a long wool, tend to be, they feel heavier. They're just, um, they're more drapey. Their locks are just different, say, than a, a merino. They have less crimp and they have less elasticity as, as a general rule than the finer breeds. So if, it, if, six, if eight ounces of merino filled this up way up here and I couldn't push it down very well, I would take an ounce or two out until it sort of just filled to the top of the basket. And then I would also adjust my cleaning agent for the amount of fleece. Uh, just a word about how I'm going to be washing or what you'll see me do. There's a lot of information out there about fleece washing. A lot of opinions, a lot of different methods, and I can't go into detail about every single one of them. I trust that you will do your own research and look at the different ways. And if you're seeing this video and watching me do it the way I'm doing it, you'll either see that and think, oh, that's great, or you'll say, eh, that doesn't really work for me, and you'll go and do it a different way. And that is totally fine. There are just too many ways of doing it for one way to be the right way. And you'll see me do quite a bit of squeezing to get the water out in between the washing and the rinsing. And I'm very gentle and I try not to overhandle the fleece because it can felt it a little bit. Fleece usually wants to felt at the cut ends. Yeah, it's just the nature of the fleece. And also this video is just about washing sheep fleece. I'm not going into details about alpaca or angora rabbit or mohair or anything like that. Just sheep fleece. And the method I use is what typically works for a Romney, uh, an average Romney fleece. So keep that in mind as well. You may have to adjust things for the type of fleece that you're washing. All right, so I've weighed out my baskets of fleece and I've got my locks ready to go. And I'm gonna head on down to my washroom and get started. Before I actually wash the fleece, I'm gonna put it in a cool water rinse to remove all the really loose stuff, the dirt, the dust, anything not lanolin because this is just cool water. So it will not remove the lanolin, but it will get all the easy stuff off. You can let it soak overnight. It'll get even more stuff than you'll see that comes off in just this really short rinse. Make sure that you are aware of the felting properties of your wool that you're washing. This kind of handling could felt a fleece that felts really easily. Romney will felt, but I've done a lot of washing on this fleece and I've pretty much been handling it the same way the whole time and it's never felted on me yet. So, and if I were letting it soak overnight, I probably wouldn't even do this. I just dump it in and leave it, but I'm trying to loosen anything that's on there in this short, shorter rinse. So, all right, so let me take this out. And you can see all the dirt that just came off in that really short dunk in the water. Squeeze out as much as I can. That's why I love these baskets so much because it just pulls it all out. I've done it with the mesh laundry bags. I've also just put the fleece directly in the bucket and had to fish it out with my hands. Um, I like the baskets better. So now, dump this out and you'll see just how much dirt came out in that really fast rinse. Yes, we have lots of red clay here. So I think that helps in the wash because now the washing agent, which is, I use Power Scare, it doesn't have to 
work through all that dirt. So now I can just uh, focus on the lanolin and any remaining dirt without having to go through all that red stuff. So I'm going to rinse this and refill it with the hot water for the wash next. Now for the actual washing part, I've got um, at least 140 degree water in the bucket. I have been experimenting using the tap water, which is just under the 125, with the lower lanolin fleeces like the Romney, and it's been doing okay, but I've been feeling like I needed to do it twice. So for me, it's just easier to heat a little water, add it to the tap water to bring it up to the one, at least 150. I think it's usually around, did I say 150? Minimum of 140, but I think it's around 150, uh, which gives it a few temp, you know, a few degrees to cool while it's sitting in the wash soak, um, so that it won't get below, I don't know, 120-ish or so. I don't want it to cool too much. So this just gets put straight in the water after it got its rinse already. I already put the power scour in here. And it's going to get a couple of squeezes to force the power scour and water through all the fleece. That's it. And then it gets... Oh, that's hot. Even through those heavy-duty gloves, that's hot. The basket. I use a basket, a second one, to hold the fleece completely under the water because it likes to float. And then the lid, which helps keep the heat in for the duration. It doesn't keep it, you know, completely at the temperature that it started at, but it does help keep it fairly consistent longer than if I didn't have a lid on it. And the only other thing is a timer. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, up to 30 minutes is okay. I've been having really good luck with 15 or 20 for lower lanolin fleeces. So, whoops, timer goes on. And then I make sure I keep this with me, make sure it's really loud in case I set it down because I've been known to walk away and leave fleece sit and cool a little too much that so might make it hard to get the lanolin off. But uh, to wash the locks, I, I do the exact same process as I did. They're the locks, the layers, they're just layered in the baskets. There's four ounces in here. I'm going to do the pre rinse first. But since I can't squeeze the fiber, I'm just going to push it up and down down and pull it up to get the water through. Yeah, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to do it rather quickly. And this tub, of course, is white so you can see better the difference between the color of the water. It's so filthy. I have a small container that I set the nest of baskets in to continue draining. And this gets dumped out. hot water, which is the tap, mixed with kettle water to get it up to the minimum of 140. I've measured out about a teaspoon of power scour, stir it in the water. Grab the basket of locks. Set it down in the water. up and down a couple of times, get that soapy water through there, and then leave that sit. I haven't yet found a, a clear plastic tub with a lid to fit in here. I'm working on it. <laughs> I just keep looking around. So until I do find one, I've just been using some bubble wrap that I found to sort of act as a heat retainer. for that and then 15 minute timer come back do two rinses so this gets done exactly the same steps as in the bucket with the loose fiber the random fleece and uh, 
you'll see these dried up on the rack. Drying up on the rack, I should say. It's been sitting for its 15 minutes. All I'm going to do is take out the top basket, pull this out, and let it drain. Do a little squeezing, pushing, squeezing. That's what's nice about these baskets. I like them. And they're great for measuring out the quantities of wool. These batches are all eight ounces, but you can put anything in here you want. I just love these baskets, they're so perfect. Okay, that's enough for that. This is going to get dumped outside. I don't risk it and dump anything with lanolin in it down my sink. So this is going outside. Now for the rinse, I've just filled it up with the tap water. So it's about 123 or so. And I'm just going to put it straight back in. Just do a couple squeezes. Just forcing the water through, that's all. Straighten out my basket. Again, this basket goes on. Keep it down under the water. The lid helps keep the basket down and the temperature consistent, which for the rinse isn't as important, but I just always put the lid on pretty much. Um, so this will get two rinses. I'll come back and dump this out and then do one last rinse in just a few minutes. I will put my timer on again just so I don't forget it. It's not as important in your rinses if you happen to forget your time that it's been sitting because you hopefully have gotten all of your lanolin out from the wash. So this will sit for 15 and I will come back to it and put it in for a second rinse. All right, it's time to take it out of its rinse. This is the first rinse, I'm gonna do two. So this is after the first one. Just squeezing to get most of the water, the majority of the water out. Now since this shouldn't have lanolin in it, this I can dump down the sink. I can also throw it outside. You can see how much color there still is to the water. I'm just going to use hot tap water and fill this with enough water to do the second rinse. I do try to use just a little bit less water uh, for the rinse, both rinses actually, just a little less than the, than the wash water. And this is fiber rinse. I'm just going to put, not measuring particularly, I'm just going to put a little bit in. I don't know exactly how much it's supposed to be. I just put a bit. I think it helps keep the fibers just a little softer. Swirl it around a little bit. And just note on water temperature, the hot water that I washed in was, like I said, somewhere around 150 to begin with. It cooled some while it sat to wash. And then, I, this is the second rinse, so it, it's still hot water though. I'm not putting it in cool or cold water. I am keeping the water still hot. It might not be as hot as the wash, but it's still hot. So there's no shocking of the fibers between really hot water and really cold water because that would definitely lead to some felting. So we don't want to do that. So this is its second rinse, the water should be fairly clear if not completely. I don't always go for absolutely clear. A little tiny bit of still coloration isn't a big deal. It's going to get it's going to get another wash after it's been made into yarn and then if it's knit or woven into something after that it'll be washed yet again so it has more opportunity to rinse anything out afterwards but there's plenty rinsed out um, just from two rinses on this. So, again basket lid. This one I'll leave maybe 10 or 15, come back and then it'll get wrung out, swung around in my, my, uh, 
my long, my long laundry. This is a big laundry bag, and I'll take it outside, and I'll swing it around, give it some good centrifugal force, and get a lot of the water out. And then I'll carry it upstairs, and you'll see my drying rack next. I'm back upstairs, and this is my drying rack. It is just repurposed old wooden framed screens for windows that came out of an old house on the farm where I work and I had a 2x4 frame made for this. There are six of them all together and they just slide in and out so I can easily get the fleeces at the back and I've brought the 8 ounces up and turned it out here and just spread it out a little bit and I've turned out the baskets of fleece here, the locks, these here and I just take it and just flip it. I mean, it's that simple. And if I am out of room, because I'm washing a lot of fleece, let's say, then you can just take these and stack them, you know, like that. Put another one and just keep going like that. That works well, too. Get a little more vertical instead of horizontal. But uh, most of these should fit on here. I just have to push things around a little bit to make room. Uh, so I'm going to put that back in for a second. And everything I put to dry, by the way, has little labels in case I'm washing a lot of fleece. I just want to know what's what. Sometimes I wash a lot of dark fleece at the same time, and I don't want to mix something up or confuse what it is and end up putting it in the wrong bag for storage. And speaking of bags for storage, I use a plastic kitchen bag with a taped label to it. You can use lots of other things, including pillowcases, uh, zippered pillow covers. I've heard of people using those. Or you can make your own if you're a, if you're a sewer. You can just take old fabric and sew up your own bags with maybe a drawstring tie or something like that. I prefer the plastic bags, not only because I can tape this on them, but they just they just work for me. I don't know, maybe it was just out of quick necessity that I grabbed one one day years ago, and I've just been using these ever since. They're big enough that I can fit almost any fleece in them, fully washed. And then all the smaller bags where I keep different things organized, like here are the washed locks. And here's some combing waste, and this is some comb top that I've started, so there's a little preview of my next video on this fleece, which is combing. Um, oh, and, and in terms of locks, these are dried locks, and they're puffed up all nicely. Now this is an entire four tray batch all stacked in one tray, but aren't they lovely? They came out beautiful and clean, and I'm really loving the fiber rinse so far. I think it is making things just a little bit nicer. So I hope that everything I've showed you has made sense to you, and if you have any problems, if you didn't understand something, if I left something out that you need to know, please don't hesitate to contact me in whatever way you're comfortable with. You can leave a comment down below. You can private message me. I'm happy to answer anything that I can to help you. Um, so the next video, like I was just saying, will be combing. That's the next step in this fleece processing. So look out for that. And I really appreciate you spending your time with me, following me along on this fleece journey, this one particular fleece, and watching it go through all of its stages. So, until next time, thanks so much for watching.